It's Sunday, and it's dead zone time. And it's Mr. Bob Dylan, live from the Hollywood Bowl, I believe. And, uh, I'm going to turn this down. Bob Dylan, I could do a whole segment on him as a kid, just before. I'm going to lower this. I love that song, Shelter from the Storm. Okay, so, and Dylan was a big uh, friend of Jerry's, and Jerry really admired Dylan's uh, songwriting and all that, and Dad covered a lot of the music, so. The enchanting character of the poetic saying is heard throughout Heraclitus' fragments, as well as in the sayings of Lao Tzu, and we can identify here the harmony and tone by the saying of Tao and Logos. And the first fragment heard is in the context of the story we have been retelling, Heraclitus story we've been retelling, provides insight into the event that has unfolded at the threshold of Heraclitus' home. Here he conveys the poetic nature of language as the gathering process that unifies hearing, speaking, and responding. Quote, the word proves those first hearing it as numb to understanding as the ones who have not heard. Yet all things follow from the word. Some, blundering with what I set before you, try in vain with empty talk to separate the essences of things and say how each thing truly is. And all the rest make no attempt. They no more see how they behave than remember clearly what they did asleep. Unquote. The word logos gathers together in an evocative appeal and thereby beckons authentic listening. This beckoning arrives and numbs those who first hear it. They are perplexed and paralyzed, as if meeting that, quote, flat, flat stingray at sea. Here Heraclitus points to the evocative character of the sage's poetic speech that Nino experienced when he described the effect Socrates produced on him. Quote, my mind and my lips are literally numb, and I have nothing to reply to you. That's from Plato's Mino, line 88. Logos lets learning be by gathering together and providing the ultimate context. Logos, Heidegger says, quote, names that which gathers everything present into presence and lets it present itself, unquote. Logos, like the Tao, is the ultimate context that is ineffable, unspeakable, and thereby the word that beckons and appeals and is heard as an appeal by the other that beckons from the mysterious region. This beckoning is the legioning or appropriation that gathers the learning, the learner, in her existence stand. Hearing is the response to this beckoning. The originary hearing is the event of turning around to attunement. As he said above, to hear is to receive meaning from the other. But this meaning is offered and received over the profound gap that opens up between beings and makes possible their being together. This prof profound gap both gathers beings together and separates them. It is a condition for the possibility of the horizon which joins them as a congregation. Here we name this gap the nameless beyond, the ultimate context. And this gap appears to us in the practice in, of the art of listening as the condition for the possibility of our creative saying, a poetic dialogue. He said above, an abyss appears in the saying of Wu Yi Wu. Abyssus, abusus, a without busus death. Bottomless, profound, and unfathomable primeval chaos. We now see how the sage's dwelling, or comportment, bears the message of this gap, as not simply what stands between beings and thereby enables the reciprocal exchange, but that which opens up between beings and being and engulfs them. This is Logos as that which gathers everything into presence and lets it present itself. To repeat what has been what was said earlier, this is being appearing as the ultimate context which engulfs. To engulf is to surround or envelop. As in the activity of the sea Flames. Quote. Here we repeat the twofold play as enduring in and with the other.
is the processual condition of the horizon of beings which endures in the ultimate horizon. The Tao, also called Logos. Beings endure in the Tao, the nameless, enduring and unchanging. Quote, conceived of as having no name, it is the originator of heaven and earth. Conceived of as having no name, it is the mother of all things. The nameless Tao signifies the ultimate, ultimate context which endures and remains unchanged. As the ultimate context, the Tao was described by Lao Tzu as appearing to us in the twofold play of nearness and farness. This is the nearness of being, which is also its oblivion or beyond. To be beyond is to be, quote, farther on than, more distant than, beyond the horizon, beyond the confines of earth, outside the understanding, limits, or reach of, past, beyond human comprehension, beyond endurance, superior to, surpassing, above, wise beyond all others, more than in excess of, over and over. The twofold play can also be described as beings processual unfolding, hidden, unhidden, appearing, disappearing, revealing, concealing. Together we call them the mystery. Where the mystery is the deepest is the gate of all that is subtle and wonderful from the Tao. The twofold play is the mystery of being which we endure in learning. We receive this mystery as the gift of teachability. The essence of this mystery is teaching, which is nothing else than this letting learning happen. Here in the context of Heraclitus' fragments, we hear the enchantment of the word as that which bears the tidings of this mystery. The word, the Tao, which is spoken, is still only what is conveyed to the ones who hear most attentively. The nameless, ineffable other remains beyond, hidden, residing, and concealed. All is gathered and allowed to present itself by this process, which by its nature remains partially concealed and never fully reveals itself. Quote, allow all things follow from the word, unquote, indicates that it is always already and thereby exists before, during, and after all that endures. Nothing stands before this unfa unfathomable abyss. All repose who receive its beckoning and appeal. Here we recall the teaching of Diotima, who explained to Socrates how the word appears and is heard when it arrives from the beyond, from the nameless, the nothing, and subsists and engulfs. Above we call this most originary context because it endured and engulfed even beings' processual unfolding. We call this nameless ineffable other the condition for the possibility of beings' processual unfolding. As a location for both beings appearing and disappearing, the beyond, the ultimate context, location, clearing, or topos. Beings' processual unfolding appears as logos, the word that beckons and appeals us, but as the ultimate saying offers the essential appeal of language to show its own limits and thereby reveals its inherent an implicit possibility. This is why being is named with the processual unfolding of the twofold play. Being arrives as the word, Logos, Tao, bears the message of the way as the dwelling of learning. To hear this message is to be attuned to this way. The role of the sage as the one whose dwelling unfolds along the way of learning is to bear the message of the word, to d transmit the ultimate saying, to disclose the arrival of the appeal of being. The sage thus discloses the ultimate saying in the evocative speech that turns, tunes, and attunes. The message, like Hun Yin's declaration from first not a thing is, is received as the dismantling, intellectualizing subject whose ego cogito has objectified the other as that which stands against. The gift of the saying, sage, quote, that was once spoken is so far still unspoken. It's received by the one who is reposed, who has been released to ha hearing the saying of the gods. This one we call the sage, the one who hears and in turn gives or passes on what has been heard. The sage is the hearer of being saying Logos and the Tao. That's a very long and extremely complicated um, piece to read, and it seems as if I'm getting a little bit more time um, to say something about it. Um, I believe that we're... This is... Almost the end of chapter uh, on Heraclitus. Let's see if I can find it. 
Not quite. Oh yeah, now this goes on for a bit. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to, let's see here, it looks as if this was the end of, um, yeah, this material is not in anywhere. It's not in the book. The, the, this, this particular, um, yeah, this, this particular meditation from 5.11, 2004, read this date, 5-11-2014, um, ends were with a quotation. So chapter the chapter 5 on uh, the dwelling of Heraclitus ends on page 126, and it's the midway point um, from this, yeah, from this meditation. So it drops out. So all this talk of all the logos, and it's interesting, I, I, I can feel that, um, I, and I do recall that, and was feeling this when I was reading it, that a couple things, one, that this felt like it was going on a little bit in a sort of uh, rep uh, repetitive kind of way, um, although, you know, there's some pretty powerful stuff happening here. I mean, in, in particular, all this discussion of the nameless, ineffable other um, that remains beyond hidden, residing and concealed, and it's sort of this, m m the most ultimate context that allows for being even to be. Uh, so it is the, um, this clearing or topos, the ultimate context, space. And because for me in the end, time is significant because it's what breaks into and makes possible action, but all of that happens in something. So time is always within space. Things happen temporally, but they are happening within a location. So for me, the location or the, uh, or the space is always or the most originary. And so one of the things that is, um, it's not in the book, it gets dropped off, uh, I cut it off, and I, and I remember doing this actually now that I'm realizing that it's not in the book, being in learning, um, that... Um, It is nevertheless very significant and very important, right? So I'm slightly disappointed that I decided to at l not include um, this further iteration of the ultimate context uh, of space and location. So, um, yeah, I think that's about, that's going to about do it. Let's see what's going on with the dead zone. Um, uh, Cornell University show. So this is the first weekend of May, and usually the first weekend of May, um, I play the May 8, 1977 Cornell University show, because um, it's one of the most important, if not the most important, Greek for so That's what this is in the background. Not a very exciting video to watch me listening to my radio show that's happening, but so be it. <laughs> okay, gonna do it for me.